In this video today, we have a couple of awkward lambings that we need to help out with. We have a ewe who has been prolapsing that we have to put a harness on and we get a visit from a very special shepherdess, the Viking shepherdess. If you haven't done so already, make sure and hit that subscribe button, ring the little bell and join me on this sheep farming journey. <laughs> Good morning sheep fans, Cammy's the name, sheep's the game, I'm not sure what day this is of the lambing series now, but I uh, just want to give a shout, James here, outside the front of the house, half past four in the morning, ruling to go, good on him, I said to him last night I'll pick you up after breakfast, he went and says no no, the first thing in the morning is when you might need the most help, he's a good boy, let's go see what's happening. Okay, so I've just walked in the door. And first thing I notice is Vicky's had to set up an extra pen. So I'm guessing every pen is full. Yes, it would appear that it is. So we'll get a proper look round the pens. I'm just going to stick my head into the main block. Look at this for a sight though. Good pen of you and lambs. Hopefully, get some of them out today. It's to be a bad day today. Uh, they are talking around 40 mile per hour winds today. Coming in from around 3 pm. So, if a lamb over there, let me just up the wattage. Lamb there, that looks like a, a U marked as a twin. Yeah, that's fine. She's just had one. All right. And then there's another one over here. A couple ewes licking the one lamb. Never what we want to see. He's a both coming, I get that. I get that. Two hands for this jobs, folks. Sorry about the, the, the noise all the time. The pets get so excited because it's the morning feed. So good we set of twins there. So I'm just quickly making some pen space. So we're going to have to number a couple of sheep up and pop them out. But as you saw, it's not a terrible start to the morning. Two healthy lambs there, another one lambing, and one twin has had her first lamb. We'll get all this sorted, and we'll see you when we get to the outside sheep. So for a clear run at the Cheviots, but I just wanted to show you these. Absolute belters. And there are a couple of cracking Cheviot meals for the future. One boy and one girl. Okay, in fact, I'll just get James, could you hold that for a second? I just want to show you guys something. I I'm, uh, I mentioned Sandy Brock a lot, but I watch Sandy and she does loads of cool things that I find interesting. But one thing she gets a lot is she gets like mail from people and different things. So I got a letter and she always like opens it and tells you about it, which is cool. So I thought I'll do a bit of that. Um, so it's cool. So I've got, I have opened it and looked at it already. It is from Ivan McFerrin which I'd imagine he's over in Northern Ireland with that name. Gospel, Ulster Scots, Bluegrass, Old Time Hillbilly sort of stuff. There you go, the low country boys on the road again. A CD, move my hand. What else has he sent? Working on the farm, another CD. The Sheep Song, could be a new anthem. I've got a CD player in this Nissan, I thought when I got it, it opened it, I'm like, I don't even have a CD player, but I have one in the car. So we'll open that and read it. <laughs> it starts definitely Ireland. <laughs> Cammy, I'm not sure the whole thing because it's quite a nice uh, uh, message you wrote. Uh, but you wrote, get started. Cammy, ya boy ya. <laughs> get a bit of gale breaker. Oh, get a bit of gale breaker on the end of that lambing shed and a CD player so you can have the little country boys in the shed with you. Let's get a CD in. See what it sounds like. Thanks to Ivan. He's put Ivan and Ivan and uh, Ivan and Barbara. So thanks Ivan and Barbara for sending that over to me. Let's see what it sounds like. Was this the end? <laughs> no, my friend. That was just the start. It's Dawson and Dagon, clipping and tagging, rattling, teasing, tapping, flushing and sponging. Scanning and lambing, shedding, bedding, redding. Catch you, each one. Tia is back today again, repping the houseware. Horseware. Horseware. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. 
uh, Hosfair Ireland. Is that Ireland, I? Yeah, Hosfair Ireland. Is that a good brand? Is it is it expensive? Yeah. Yeah. Of course it is. It says Hoss on it. So they're all expensive. A wee, a wee joke there. Um, so we left a sheep lambing. I know there's a lot of background noise with these sheep. I apologise, but she hasn't lambed yet. We haven't actually been able to spot her again yet. But I've just switched the camera on because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a problem because she hasn't lambed. So we're just going to find her first and then we'll let you guys see what happens. James is my expert cameraman today. We might get Tia to Lama, but it might be a tricky one. I'm not just sure. There's, there, there she's over there, I think. This is hard, but you'll see if James comes around the other side. And Tia, you, Tia, you come around as well. You see now there's like nothing showing. You see how she was sitting there kind of sad looking, so I'm guessing there's a lamb backwards here, or there's two coming at the same time, and it's caused a bit of congestion. I'll tell you what I'm going to need. I think it's a backwards lamb. Uh, there's lube. Do you know what the lube is with the tube on it? Hi. So she's, she's actually quite tight round here. Probably because the lambs aren't presenting correctly, she hasn't slackened off. This is going to be quite a tricky one, so I'll get a start to it. And, um, I say tricky, the lamb's coming backwards, I think. I could barely get my hand in. I'm pretty sure it's just a backwards lamb that's got stuck at the pelvis. And it's, it's never a good sign really when there, there's no more fluid here and she's kind of dried off. She's probably been at it a little while. She, we saw her this morning when we came in. She was pinching. But there wasn't much about her, as you can see here. So I thought just starting, give her some time, but she's probably been at it a little while now. Feeling in. Oh, that's not really a good lid, but it'll do. It'll do fine. Right, I need to go up for the haylage before in half nine as well. No, steady, I'm not going that far in. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> So you just sort of work, work your way in gently. It's alright, lass. Oh, yeah, this is not good. Not good at all. Arms backwards and it's right up tight to the pelvis. And the pelvic bones are actually quite quite tight. And she's a two crop you as well. So, basically, what I'm doing just now, obviously, you can't see, but I'm just easing the lamb deeper inside her, so that the leg has enough room to come round naturally and present the right way. Now this is a big lamb to be coming backwards so it might take a bit of a pull and what's worse is I think the other lamb is coming at the same time. And obviously we're a back. I think she's been lambing for a little while so this might not be a good result but it's amazing how long lambs can stay. You'll also notice if James comes a little bit closer, you'll notice this, the hairs here are starting to get dry. That's probably because she's been lambing for a little while. Tia, could you just hold her head for a second for me? Just to, so she doesn't try and get up. So this kid needs a good pull. Get a slam out of here. It's big, backwards and dry. <sighs> Pull down away from the bones. It's all right, I think. Maybe not. Maybe I. Yep, I thought it was. Come on, Lammy. I know you're too big, and you came backwards. So I'm just trying to get that mucus, any fluid out of it. Right, lamb. Oh, I know you've had a hard time. Oh. Come on. I think it'll be all right. My initial, my initial feeling is it will be fine, but it's just going to be a slow starter because it's probably got a bit of fluid in the lungs.
There you go. Oh, couple of those. So we just put a wee bit of straw up its nose and makes it sneeze and that helps bring things up out its lungs. But it has to be responsive for that. Just a wee tickle at the end. Don't be ramming it in. There you go. One lamb. She has got another eye. See if you just sort of massage that lamb and just keep it kind of interacting just now. So there's another one coming here, but we'll get the other one out without too much messing around. It's probably a similar size, which doesn't help. They're getting big, the lambs. I've eased the feeding back. Well, I eased it back last week, actually. Well, last week, three days ago, I thought they were getting big. This one's presenting correctly, so head and two feet, but she's narrow of the pelvis, like, very, very narrow bones and pathway. Too narrow for lambs this size. So it's not really what you want. Honestly, I find it so hard lambing with a glove on. It's like, it's just never, this, it just doesn't feel the same when you, when you put one on. Why are you laughing, James? It's a big one, you're alright lass. Here it comes, here it comes. Here it comes. A big lamb. Big lamb. Get that way for your nose. A couple of crackers. Right, the sheep are so loud uh, behind me obviously, so you probably won't hear much of what I'm saying, but crack and put of lambs there. And just as I say, you can see the lambs, th this coloration. It's a sign of them, uh, I believe it's a sign of them uh, pooing and it all mixing in and just they've been pressing for a while and trying to lamb for a while, they go that colour. But also when they've been trying for a little while, the lamb starts to dry out a bit there. And as I said, you didn't see any fluid coming from her, it's a bad sign. Okay, so mum's feeling a little bit sore after all that. What I'm going to do, just length of time she's been lambing. She's looking a bit sad there. I'm going to give her a, a jag of antibiotics just in case there's any tears there or anything that's going to cause an infection. A hard lambing like that, I think it's justified giving her a little jag. And we'll keep an eye on her and make sure she gets up and sees through those big lambs. Now, up until this point, I had been doing so well with my microphone work. However, I knew this would happen eventually, and I forgot to switch the microphone on here. Ordinarily, I would cut this part out, but because Tia does such a good job lambing this sheep, I felt it was key that I kept it in, so instead of having the audio from the actual event, I'm going to voice it over and talk you through all the nonsense I was speaking there and then. So as I asked James to come in close with the camera, I'm describing how you can see this lamb, the colour of it, and clearly the size of it, is holding up proceedings here with this sheep and she's just needing a little bit of assistance to get this lamb out. So I step back out the way here, Tia's all gloved up and super keen and she just gets straight into it. Now as I talk her through the process of lambing a sheep like this, what you want to be doing is pulling one leg at a time initially until you get that shoulder passed through the pelvis. So as she pulls the top leg there, you can see it's now straightened out, the shoulder's through the pelvis and it's fine. The bottom leg now, get both hands on it and pull it straight through as she does there. It's then a case of two hands on the legs till you start getting a bit of movement and the lamb comes out and I luckily get the straw there just in time so that it gets a nice clean bed to come out onto. As you can see the lamb giving a little wriggle there already. I just go over my aftercare routine with Tia once again. You make sure the nose is clear of mucus and slime and then we start stimulating that lamb with her hands, giving it a little pats, little slaps and rubbing it gently to try and get it going. In fact, in honesty, you can be quite vigorous with them to try and get them going. But as you can see, this lamb's holding it, the weight of its head already and it's a good looking lamb. Now we've got this sheep down, she's been upset and disrupted from our usual natural lambing process, so I always make sure we get the second lamb whilst we're there. So Tia doesn't take much convincing and she's straight in there with the glove. I briefly explained to her the perfect scenario and the way that the lamb should be sitting 
in the womb. That way she's not going in totally blind and she has some idea of how to visualise what she's going to be looking for when she puts her hand into this sheep. You have to bear in mind it's incredibly hard for someone like Tia who hasn't lambed a lot of sheep to put her hand in there and visualise what she's feeling. So it takes her a few moments just to get her head round it with me gently coaching her and describing possible scenarios, she eventually works it out. When you are going for a second lamb like this, if no parts of the lamb are through the pelvis yet, i.e. both front feet and the head are back beyond the pelvis, you may need to work both parts gradually. So gently pull on the front two legs and then go back and ease the head through that pelvis. Don't just grab two legs and pull like we do when the lamb is at the back door make sure that that head comes with you because quite often you pull those front legs and the head will bend back and not go through the pelvis so you need to really get your hand behind that head quite often and ease it through the pelvis before you start pulling too hard with those front legs. So Tia has some legs at the back door now, there's two legs there, I'm just asking her to confirm the nose is definitely there also and that she hasn't just brought the legs which she says she has. I then coach her again regarding making sure the head's fully through the pelvis and then start pulling one leg at a time. And as you see that's near a perfect demonstration of gently pulling on the legs whilst putting your hand behind that head and bringing it through the pelvis and then it's a case of just pulling and bringing that lamb out into the world. As you see there, two healthy good sized lambs all looking good and bright straight out the womb and another fantastic job done from Tia. We've got a special guest in the shed today and it's not you this time Robbie. <laughs> the Viking Shepherdess is here oh. <laughs> and uh, Man. baby Thor. What do you think? <laughs> he's absolutely got, he's never seen yows like this. He's absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> He's so big. <laughs> I can't I can't it. The size of these sheep eh? You wouldn't get the them on... And... You wouldn't get them on the hill. And they've all got two lambs. Crazy, That's isn't amazing. it? Isn't it crazy? <laughs> Think now, what's Archie at today? Oh, right. Really? <laughs> That's my microphone. It. <laughs> it's good now because when I interview folk, I've got two of these. And I can, like, they can put one can, on. Like, put so one we can on. stand at a distance and it shares the. Oh, uh, and then it'd be like, all right. Aye, like a proper interview. Yeah. Be good, isn't it? That's so, good. Uh, yes, what have you have you enjoyed coming to the mainland today? Yes. Yeah. Could I, she's chose the stormiest day of the spring to come <laughs> over. Um, you can't hear it just now, but there's 40 mile an hour gusts just about to start, so a good chance she'll be staying here tonight, is that about right? <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see. Ferries isn't off yet, so... Right, OK, well, if, if you do, there'll be pens being watered and stuff, you know. <laughs> oh, right, that's right. Vicky's sick <laughs> of these pets. Help Vicky. <laughs> Aye, Vicky's, Vicky's sick of these pet lambs, so you will get something to do, it'll be fine. You'll earn your keep. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's exciting, good to get to the mainland. How's, yeah. how's lambing going over there? Well, we sort of, well, we weren't meant to be lambing yet, yeah. but it's we sort of had a top breakout, so... Uh, yeah. And obviously, Archie blames it on me. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing to do with the fact there's no fences or anything like that. No. <laughs> Aye, so it's great to see her. Great to see her. That was just a wee... Great to break things up a little bit with a, a familiar face, isn't it, Just? Isn't it, Just? Isn't it? Isn't it, Just? <laughs> Hello there. What are we up to now? Well, we've got a sheep with a prolapse and we're going to go and fix it. So come with me and we'll see how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually like, hey, let me take the camera for a second. Do you know what this is like? It's like I'm doing a live show at the pantomime or something. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a theatre production. I, I, should, I should stand up here. Stand up this. Friends, Romans, countrymen, <laughs> lend me your ears. <laughs> that's Shakespeare there. Right, okay, I think that's Shakespeare. Right, you're gonna hold that? Yeah, I'll Okay, hold okay. It. Right, uh, Thor, why, how many times have we put the wellies on? Right, come on, you ready? One, two, three, up. Oh, right, how, you hold her for a second, Vicky, I'll give this welly. Right. Toes and tuck. <laughs> Toes and tuck for Martin. Toes and tuck for Welly. How do you say Welly? <laughs> stubble. Toes and tuck for Stubble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, hey, Robbie, you hold this for a second. 
Okay, so we'll just got a wee, a wee hold of this shape. As I am brute. Right, lass. You're all right, you're all right. Now, now this girl here, although you can't see it on this, she has been prolapsing a lot, and the reason is, she's very big of the belly. Now, earlier on, it was hanging out a good bit, and it has been getting progressively worse the last couple of days, so really, as a preventative measure, what I'm going to do is put a prolapse harness on her. Really so that when she sits down, it's not coming out and getting dirty and possible chance of infection and whatnot. She's actually quite lively and in good spirits, so I'm not too worried about her. I just don't want it to be happening now. Why is he? Why do we even need the, this? Well, we don't now, actually, because I thought the, the prolapse when I last looked at it was still out, but now it's away, Robbie, so you can actually just trim that out if you want. That was a little bit of disinfectant I had. Now... Just leave it in. No, if it's in, I'm not going to go in about it. To, if it's in, it's in. That's fine. Some team you've got plumbing with you coming. Isn't it, Katinka? <laughs> Quite incredible. <laughs> and Vicky there in the background. Nobody. No. Vicky's a bit like Batman. Like <laughs> nobody ever sees all the work she does, but she just does it at night when I'm in my bed. That's right. So dead simple with this harness. She's not got a prolapse out just now, so it's not very much exciting to see. But it's quite self-explanatory. You just uh, put the obvious crosshatch bit over the vaginal area here to stop this prolapse coming out later. Bring the straps round. Clip the harness on. Make sure it's not rubbing in at her joints or too tight for her. Or you haven't twisted it like I have there. That's okay. This is quite a good harness. This, this was the luxury one I went for with the leather straps. It's just a bit comfier, I think. So how long does this sit on them then? Ah, oh, this will stay on until she lands. I think a very good question there. Yeah. Very good question. You could work for the BBC. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. This harness, I'll just leave this on it till she lambs. They can actually lamb past the harness, believe it or not. Um, it's quite incredible when you come in to achieve this prolapse and she's got two lambs sitting. Um, you know, it's not going to be an issue. We're going to see it anyway because there's always someone here. But the idea is really for this sheep, she's about as mild an example as you can get. When she's sitting down, most of the time as we come past here, she's got her, her lamb bed out, protruding out, picking up straw and getting a little bit dirty. And recently it's been when she stands up, it's staying out, whereas before it was going back. On this occasion, we've came and it's not been out, which is great. But this is just really a, an aid for her to stop it coming out when she sits down and really keep it clean, keep it sanitised, and maybe just help her a little bit with the pressure she's feeling. So if it was much worse, we could do things like put a spoon in, which we might have one at some point. Uh, the sheep are hardly getting any feed, so I don't really expect to see prolapses. I try and keep them away from being over fat. But you get a spoon, which is a thing that can be inserted into the vagina and tied round into the wool, which helps as well if this harness isn't going to do enough. Because sometimes this won't, no matter how much pressure you get on there, the sheep will still force it out if she's under a lot of discomfort inside. So we're going to give her a jag, jag of antibiotics just now. She had Metacam this morning when I saw it was sticking out. I gave her a jag of Metacam to see if it would ease her off a bit. But it didn't, so this is just a wee injection into the muscle just to help with any possible infections there. And it's fairly loose, that harness, but I don't really think she needs it that tight. I just think she needs a wee bit of support. So we'll just let her go, guys, and just see how she goes there. I think that looks fine. Not too tight, she can get her head down. It can get that um, with these sheep, if they get quite extreme, that that actually has to be stitched and there is occasions where the vagina has to be stitched closed to keep her womb inside that's not really a job for if you've never done it before or seen it done it's not really a job you should be tackling i would say better to get someone experienced in or of course get the vet in and get them to do it that's always the best option you get lots of questions about like i see on facebook forums and different pages like people ask questions like what's the best medicine to use for this and for that and it's like, you're going to buy the medicine from the vet, so why not just ask the vet what the best medicine is? That's always my advice. It doesn't cost you anything to phone the vet and say, here's the problem, what should I do? And if they think, right, I need to come and see it, that's fair enough. 
the vet's not going to make extra work for themselves. It doesn't work like that. They're there to help you. So always speak to them rather than some random person like me who could be talking any nonsense, as I do often. I didn't actually film an ending for this video. I must have been too distracted by all the visitors. Hope you've enjoyed this one. We'll see you for the next one. Where's our prolapse? Ah, there's, a, there's a prolapse over there. We're going we're gonna to sort Robbie. Wait, in there? Eh? In there? Aye, aye. Oh, yeah. That big sheep. Right. Okay. Um, James, if you can just pan round to me like this. No, you need, no, do you know, know what pan round means? I know. <laughs> Aye, you're going to do it. I'll do it. Like pan round. Oh, hello there. <laughs>